God so loved us that he saved us in order that he might use us to save others. <laughs> nice. You guys, we are, we are God's hands and feet here, okay? We are the people on the ground for them. If you remember, last time I was here speaking, I said, let Jesus live through you. You don't live for Jesus, you let Jesus live through you. That's why he's here. He's living through us because he wants to continue to build the kingdom of heaven. That's why we need to get out quickly, which is, we all know, we've got to get out quickly. God's ready to do business. He has already set it up. Heaven's ready to rejoice. We can't wait for opportunity, guys. We can't wait for the perfect time. We just have to go and make it happen. They may not like it right away, but they've heard it. And hopefully they're going to come back and want to know more. we got to get out quickly because it's the command of Christ. And we need to go out quickly because it's the compassion of the Father. He sent his only son for us. And we are called to let Jesus live through us. So... We know we got to get out quickly. The next question is, and you see the question that Bill and I really do not like the most. Well, why? How? There's some things you need to know about this invitation that Christ extends to everybody. If we are compelled, if we are to compel people to come to God's banquet, we must recognize the nature of God's invitation. Okay, there's four big things here, guys, and I hope that uh, the leaders will talk to you guys more about that in small group time, or if you have questions about it, go ahead and talk to your small group leaders and Bill and his team. But the first one is, God's invitation is the most extensive invitation ever extended. It, it has no limits. You go back to Luke 14, 15 through... 24, 23, excuse me. He started off by offering this banquet to three people. They chose not to come. What did he do? Go out and invite more, the lame, the sick, the crippled. When the house full wasn't full, what did he say? Go out and get more. All right? This is a... This is, there's no limits to what this invitation is extended to. God's invitation is the most inclusive invitation ever extended. Usually when you think of that, you think about a party that you're invited to, it's usually going to be what? Only the most popular people or the endless people, right? God's inclusiveness is kind of different than just not the popular people, but it's the what? It's for everybody. All right, this is like a huge list. I mean, it'd be like showing up at the dance club and the list would be like a book, you know, that tall and everybody's invited to it. I would actually get to go to a party then, you know. But God's invitation is also the most intensive invitation ever. This invitation that he extends to everybody, guys, it's life-changing. He talked to Bill to, you know, any of the leaders, all right, this invitation is life-changing. It will, it will change everything. Many of you, I don't remember the movie, um, To Save a Life. The most, the most famous part of the whole thing is, did any of you listen to what he said? I mean, if you're not going to let this change you, then what's the, what's the point, Okay. This invitation that God extends will change you. It's a life-changing decision. You have to realize that when you're going out there and talking to others. Number four, God's invitation is the most expensive invitation ever extended. Somebody tell me why and make Bill look good. You have to die to yourself. Close. What else? You have to uh, <coughs> Why is it the most expensive invitation to God? Cost God everything. What's everything God had to give to us? And what did His only Son have to do to save us? Die on the cross and forgive our sins. And give us the blood to forgive our sins. 
Good job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it costs God everything. This invitation, guys. So remember that. When you guys are out there doing it, you're in the schools, you're you're in the community, you're hanging out, you're kicking them in the Walmart parking lot before the police come and kick you out. Okay? <laughs> you know. Remember that. This was the most extensive, inclusive, intensive, and expensive invitation ever. If we're compelled to, co to compel people to come to Christ, we really are helpless. You think about it. We cannot force a person to come to God. It's not something where I can say, you and you get out here. Whoever wins, man, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta choose God as your savior. Okay, it's not a physical battle you can win. All right, you can't force somebody. I mean, I'm six foot three, three twenty-five. Yes, I can probably force somebody into submission, but I can't force somebody to say you're going to take. You know, I can't do that. Second. We cannot trick others into coming to God. It's not a game. There's no deception. There's no magic show, okay? I can't say, hey, come to church, blah, 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 we're going to do this, and also magically we're going to trick them to come to, you know, to Christ. It still comes down to the situation as people, it's a decision that has to be made. You can't trick somebody into doing it. You can't, I mean, yeah. Say Bill takes you guys to a really cool go kart place, youth retreat. Say CIY, okay? We've seen it happen. You guys go, you're all hyped up. You guys come home, you're on the mountaintop. A lot of kids who go for the first time really feel that high. What happens is, though, is when they get home, Reality sets back in, we fall back into the rut. For those of us who already know Christ, we fall back into the normal routine of what we do to follow Christ. But for those who have just finally experienced the joy and satisfaction Christ can give, if they have not made that decision to follow them, when they get home, they're going to fall back into status quo. All right? So we can't do something like that and trick them into, you know, fall in love with Christ. And then come back and just expect them to be over. Oh, really? yeah. All right, the decision they have to make. We cannot win the argument that will make them commit to Christ. Bill and I can sit down and have an argument, which we do on Facebook quite a bit. Usually, I'll let him win, just because I'm on the road and I get tired of texting on Facebook. But um, it's it's something you can't just sit down and debate with these people. Okay. I mean, it's not, it's not a debate. It's not like watching Fox, CNN, C-SPAN, all those stupid channels that I pay for that I don't want that tell me that the government shut down because I really don't care. The argument, there is none. That's not an argument for us. All we want to do is go out and spread the word of God. We speak the word of truth. We pray for and with the people. But we're not going to sit there and try to have an argument and throw out facts to win them over to Christ. That's not how it works. Three things, guys. If we're going to be compelled, we are going to compel people to come to Christ, we must recognize and respond to our potential. You all have potential. You guys should think about that, okay? It may not be in what you want it to be in. I wanted to be an NFL player. That didn't happen. I probably got signed by Detroit. I would have quit Watch because it. it was Detroit. Not gonna say anything, but Green Bay won Detroit lost. Green Bay won Detroit lost. Sorry. And the Bears. And it the doesn't Bears. matter. Green Bay is on the up and up, and we're losing people. And, you know, we lose our top right receiver, and what do we do? We still won. <laughs> but we didn't complain about Calvin Johnson being hurt. I'm sorry. I, had to <laughs> I was texting Bill when I was in the, when I was in Flint a couple weeks ago when Calvin Johnson wasn't playing. And that was his excuse for the beatdown Packers game. So. But back to this. The first thing, guys, is you have the privilege of being a spokesman for God. Think about that. It'd be like you're working for some huge organization. I'd be like, 
Bill getting the phone call from Detroit saying, we want you to come be <laughs> our spokesman. All right? So imagine this, okay? They got their little, little stand. They got the little thing behind there. It says Detroit Lions. I don't know who their main sponsor is. Uh, Ford. Was that? Ford. 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 I gotta buy a Chevy now. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, you know, I mean, well, Ford has a lot of money, so they must have felt sorry, but. Okay, imagine that. Bill, you know how much pride he'd have coming up there? Bill Mitchell, um, spokesman for the Detroit Lions. Um, we like to comment on the uh, injury to Calvin Johnson. Happy, 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 happy. See? What am I talking about? Okay. That is, it's a privilege. Now think about this, though, guys. Minus the little podium, minus the thing in back that says God, sponsored by the you know the universe, whatever you want to put on there. Every day you get up, you should be saying happy, 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 because God gave you another day. Happy, happy, happy. But you get a chance to go out and speak on behalf of God. Have you really stopped and thought about that? You get to speak for God. You are God's spokesman. Such a privilege and honor. Second, yours is the responsibility of inviting others to come to Christ. Responsibility. Okay, let's just look at that. I got the verse for you. James 1.22. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Just don't be hearers, be doers. So we're doing what James 1.22 says. Are we just barely reading and listening to Matthew 28.18 or are we actually getting out and doing it? The best thing I ever heard was last, I was listening to um, the message on XM Radio but I was actually listening to the Message Amp, where they play all the Christian rock that nobody wants to really listen to, I guess, so they put it on in the middle of the night, on Saturday night. And the, 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 the sponsor was, uh, not sponsor, the person hosting that night was talking about this, and they said this. Churches are all talking about getting out memorizing your Bibles now, right? That's great. Memorize your Bible. I think it's a wonderful thing. You can quote any verse of me you want. Can I do that? No, I don't have the whole Bible memorized. Here's the thing. It don't mean jack if you're not living it. And I will say that to anybody's face that comes up to me and throws verses in my face and I don't see you living it. The Bible is just not merely for you to read. You be hearers, but you're also going to go out and be doers. The responsibility that we have. Last, yours is the joy of conveying God's invitation to people looking for answers. It's a joy. Okay, people. When you get the opportunity to speak about what God has done in your life or what He is doing in your life, it should be excitement. It should be fun. You should be ecstatic to get out and talk about it. All right? It shouldn't be like talking about something at school, you know. Who knows the answer? Don't call on me. Don't call on me. Don't call on me. All right? You should be jumping at the opportunity. It's a joyous thing to be able to tell people what God is doing for you, what God is doing in your life. I'm sorry, but I don't really see, you know, anywhere in the Bible where God says we need to hold it all in. Okay? It should be a very happy, happy, happy experience is what it should be. We can be used of God to help other people to be saved. Let's just look at a few, a few more things here.